D is keeping us Dungeon Masters busy with exciting new content, so I am super stoked to learn more about the Wild Beyond the Witchlight and the Companion Dice Set. That's especially what I'm excited to find out about. The Witchlight Carnival Dice and miscellan mis miscellan miscellan Miscellaneous? Mi Guys, I speak for a living. We saw Abria Ayengar lead some WWE wrestlers through a sneak peek of the first part of this book in her adventure Chaos Carnival earlier today, and now we have an opportunity to learn more about the book. The Wild Beyond the Witchlight invites players to explore the Witchlight Carnival, a portal into the Feywild, and additional plane in the D&D multiverse. And the Feywild is also known as the Plane of Fairies. It's basically where campaigns based on fairy tales and old folk tales, both beautiful and horrific, can be told. Beyond a brand new adventure, this book includes whimsical NPCs, fantastical monsters, new playable races, bunny folk and rabbit folk, backgrounds, and more tips and magical tricks for dungeon masters than you can shake a unicorn horn at. To get a better look, we've got a video teaser that showcases a lot of what D&D players can expect with the Wild Beyond the Witchlight. So let's check it out. Hi everybody, I'm Chris Perkins. I am one of the principal game architects for Dungeons & Dragons here at Wizards of the Coast. And I want to talk a little bit about our new adventure, The Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Our first 5th edition adventure set primarily on the plane of the Feywild. In the adventure, the players get to visit some absolutely wondrous locations and get into all sorts of wacky hijinks. So what is the Feywild, you ask? It's like a reflection of the world, similar in a way to the Shadowfell is a gloomy reflection of the real world. The Feywild is a more wondrous, brighter reflection. Uh, but like fairy tales, the Feywild comes in all sorts of flavors and tones. Sometimes it can be a dark place. Sometimes it can be a very light and whimsical place. What the Wild Beyond the Witchlight does is it kind of shows an archetypal Feywild domain. We don't visit the Feywild in its entirety, of course, because it's vast, uh, but by focusing on this new domain that we've created, this place called Prismere, we can give you and your players a real taste of what the Feywild can be like, and also give you pointers on how to distinguish a Feywild-themed adventure from, say, an adventure that takes place in the natural world. Now, in the Feywild, there are the creatures you expect to encounter, fey beings like satyrs and pixies and sprites, and then there are intruders that make their way into the domain or creatures that have been lost there or found their way there because they crossed over from the natural world into the Feywild. And so there's a great deal of range when it comes to the types of encounters that you can run there. But with the Wild Beyond the Witchlight, we really wanted to show you some key aspects of the Feywild. One of the weird things about the Feywild is it's very easy to get lost time and space sort of bend there in weird ways. Uh, a lot more time can pass than you think, and sometimes there is no road to where you need to go, or the road turns back on itself if you don't know the trick to getting to the end of it. One of the things I'm most proud of is that a clever party can get through this adventure without ever having to resort to combat if they don't want to. Um, that's the first time we've tried something like this in a 5th edition adventure, and I look forward to hearing how that goes. And so, in this adventure, we show you how some of the rules of the Feywild work, like the rule of reciprocity, and how Fey like to be repaid for the kindnesses that they offer, or the rule of ownership, what do you own and what can you give up? And what happens when you take something that doesn't belong to you? There can be serious consequences for stuff like that in the Feywild. Uh, hi, my name is Ari Levich. I'm a game designer on Dungeons and & Dragons. And for the Wild Beyond the Witchlight, I had the pleasure of getting to work on parts of Prismere. So Prismere is a domain of delight. And Domains of Delight in the Feywild are these 
sequestered realms that are ruled by a powerful archfey. These are powerful beings that are uh, native to the Feywild. But something has happened in Prismir, in the adventure Wild Beyond the Witchlight, in that the Archfey, Zabilna, is kind of missing in action. And in her absence, the Domain of Delight has fractured into these splinter realms. And the splinter realms are hither, thither, and yon. And each one has its own distinct feel based on what's going on there. And so one realm hither is this fetid, dank swamp. Thither is this ancient forest filled, you know, with whimsical trees and all sorts of woodland creatures. And then yon is this dramatic landscape of mountains and brooding clouds and storms. And so there's this kind of patchwork feel to Prismere based on what has happened that in, in, its, in its fractured state, each realm has taken on its own kind of miniature domain vibe. The carnival itself uh, serves as a fey crossing that could take people from the material plane into the Feywild, specifically into the domain of Prismere. The Feywild is actually this plane of, of absolute emotion. Imagine emotion like in Technicolor. Everything is amped up and it's filled with capricious and mischievous and charming denizens. And it is a, it's a place to get into adventures that are a little bit more whimsical in nature, but there's a playful wickedness to the Feywild that doesn't exist in other parts of the Dungeons & Dragons multiverse. Hi, my name is Kate Irwin, and I'm a senior art director on d and I was the art director for Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Inspiration for this book was kind of all over the place. It was everything from Willy Wonka and James and the Giant Peach, that magical adventure sort of feeling, to kind of darker things. All of the maps in the book were done by Will Doyle and Stacy Allen. Will and Stacy worked with Chris early on in the process, so the maps really were a big part of um, how the adventure flows, and the details that you see in the map inform the adventure, and the adventure informs the maps. It, it was a very symbiotic process. And then my great luck is that they had wonderful sketches to work from and finalized them into the, the beautiful maps that you see in the book. We worked on the dice set prior to the book, so I was able to kind of dip my feet into the commissioning of this wonderful place before I really had to go in the deep end. So we did a subset of characters, games, showing some of the different sorts of things that you'll experience when you go to the carnival. And those pieces were in the dice set. So there's a little bit of information about uh, what it's like there. One of my favorite pieces from the Feywild section of the book is actually a chapter opener done by an artist that I've worked with a million times, Kieran Yanner. I asked him to illustrate a uh, bunch of adventurers hanging off of a swamp gas balloon. And the sketch came in and my heart stopped. It made me so happy to see this sketch. The composition, again, he just captured the character so beautifully, but, but this time in a really active um, kind of scene. So that was, that was like one of the happiest accidents in this entire book. I just love that piece. My main goal with any project is to put together a book that I'm proud of, pleasing the lead and pleasing the fans. Those are my main goals with any project. I do hope on behalf of our team that you love the wild beyond the witch light and its satellite products as much as we do. I wanna thank everyone who worked on it. A lot of people poured their hearts and souls into this product, their love of the Feywild shining through and I just want to say thank you all um, for all that you did. So much. Okay, so now to help us legally talk about the book without breaching an NDA contract, please welcome one of my favorite human beings, 
on this planet, the project lead, Chris Perkins. Yay, it's Chris! Hey, Mika! Yay, Chris! I'm so excited to see you. I'm so excited to see you too. It's been way too long. Now, they picked the best person to do this interview because as you know, I'm obsessed with the Feywild. But how did you decide to take your next epic adventure into the Feywild? I, I just wanted to go somewhere that I had never been before. Hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. like, we, in, in past adventures, we've gone to uh, familiar places like Waterdeep and um, the Forgotten Realms and um, other places. But I had never personally had a chance to write an adventure in the Feywild before. And so I, I had to do it. And I wanted to create locations that were completely new that no one had ever seen. Absolutely. And I feel like we always hear about the Feywild. We always reference the Feywild. You know, we have all these different elf races that, that come from the Feywild. We have Leonin that come from the Feywild, but we haven't actually ventured into the Feywild and seen what this place has to offer. Obviously, without breaching NDA, do you have any little tidbits that are your favorite part that, you know, maybe D&D &D players haven't actually seen before? Well, I think, um... One of the great things about going to the Feywild is that you get to meet a host of whimsical creatures. Mm. And, and, you know, they've all got their own charms and they've mm. all got their own problems. And, uh, but their whole mindset is a little different right. than what you're accustomed to in, in adventures on the material plane. And so it kind of knocks you a bit off kilter. And I think <laughs> that's one of the, one of the great uh, secrets to running a Feywild adventure is you're constantly reminded that this is not the world you came from. Mm. There are things about it that are similar, but then something weird happens and you're like, oh right, we're, we've crossed over into that other place. Absolutely, and I know that uh, there are different planes in other adventure books, like you have Ravenloft, you go through the mist and things are a bit different there, but how does the Feywild differ from other adventure books? That's a really good question. Um, so. In many respects, this adventure is kind of like a reflection of Curse of Strahd. As, as you know, Curse of Strahd is this, um, you know, a, a powerful creature trapped within the mystery, misty boundaries of this frightening realm uh, called a Domain of Dread. Well, in the Feywild, you've got things called Domains of Delight, and they're similar it, in some respects, because they are contained. But instead of having a dark lord imprisoned in it, it's got an archfey who rules it. Yes. And so, uh, and the archfey is in control. And I don't know whether you know this or not, but uh, if you're an archfey, your emotions are, and, uh, are so powerful that you can shape the realm to your desire. Um, but so can even the lowliest creature like a, a, a small little goblin child uh, in the Feywild who feels a little sad and sits under a tree might discover a few leaves just start falling off the tree because it is responding to her emotional state. Whereas if you're really, really happy because you just ate a great sandwich, <laughs> you know, a, a flower might just bloom out of the ground next to you and shine its smiling face up at you. I'm so, just everything you're saying is making me so excited to play this adventure. And as always, this D&D book is packed with incredible art. We saw a little snippet of it in that video beforehand, but can you talk to us about what we're going to see on our screen right now? Right now, right there it is. Oh my God. Oh yes. So this, this, is, the, this is the Witchlight Carnival coming to a town near you. <laughs> they, travel in, they travel in coaches pulled by fairy winged creatures. And uh, this particular coach is helmed by the carnival owners, Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. You can see they're tiny little figures at the reins. Wow, so how much platinum do I have to pay to have my PC have one of those for herself to ride around the <laughs> Feywild in? <laughs> So I'm, I'm glad you asked. Uh, Mr. Witch will not allow you to take his coaches, but mm. when you cross over into the Feywild, if you look around hard enough, you can find one of your own. Now, now are you telling me that I can ride a unicorn in the Feywild, Chris Perkins? Uh, you, can, you can ride all sorts of things in the Feywild, including so uh, 
including giant dragonflies and giant cranes. Oh my God. And you might even want to hop on the back of a gargantuan owl. What? Another question, follow up on this one. How much platinum do I personally have to pay you for you to slide me this book a little early so I can start <laughs> plotting how many mounts I need to stock up on? I know people who know people. I can hook you up. Ooh, I'm excited about that. Okay, so now tell me what we're seeing on this screen. <laughs> so this is one side of the beautiful poster map that Kate Irwin art directed and that uh, Will Doyle and Stacey Allen created. This is the Witchlight Carnival, or at least one possible configuration of it, because it can change configurations on different worlds. Uh, one of the cool things about this poster map is that it's got some interactive elements Ooh. in the top left and bottom right corners are tools that the DM can use to track the passage of time in the carnival, because time is a very important theme of this adventure. And the other to track the mood of the carnival, which the characters can affect by their actions and their antics. That's so exciting. Everything about this is so whimsical and fun and colorful. Like you said, the pretty much antithesis of Ravenloft and anything having to do with Strahd. Now, uh, can you give us a little summary of what we're seeing here? Uh, yeah, this is one of the key locations within the Feywild that we've got to create and then uh, develop. It's known as the Palace of Heart's Desire. Ooh. And it is home of the Archfey of Prismere. But as you can see, uh, the gardening is a little out of whack and uh, some work needs to be done. I mean, it depends on your aesthetic. <laughs> and speaking of aesthetic, what is happening on this screen? Oh, this is our this is our delightful hosts of the Witchlight Carnival, Mr. Witch and Mr. Light, standing in front of what appears to be some sort of mysterious portal. But I can't talk very much about that. Mm, of course you can't. Of course you can't. Oh, this is a happy. <laughs> is that a future pet I see in in before my eyes? Oh my goodness. Yes, indeed. This little character, a uh, displacer beast kitten named Star, oh. has. Uh, has run off onto a Feywild adventure and you might be able to catch up with it uh, and befriend it and have it on your side. Oh my God, Chris Perkins, why have you done this to me? I am <laughs> so excited for a baby displacer beast. Oh, all right, there's a, there's a lot of cute creatures in the Feywild that you meet on this adventure um, that are very easy to fall in love with. You have killed me. And speaking of creatures, really quick, because unfortunately I can't sit here and talk to you about this book for the next five hours, which, God, I wish I could. They're cute creatures, but they're new races. Can you give us a little summary, a little taste of these new races that we can see coming up in this book? Absolutely. So uh, those who have been paying attention to our Unearthed Arcana articles on our website know that we recently released playtest versions of what we now call the fairy and the heron gone fairies of course are small fairies that fly <laughs> right um, you know uh, uh, and uh, they come in all sort of uh, shapes and colors and uh, they're very charming and they've got you know fairy magic which is uh, awesome and fun heron gone's uh, which were the brainchild of my co-designer, Ari Levich, are rabbit folk. Um, their, their name is a play on here and gone. Uh, and that's partly because they get around and they get around quickly. <laughs> well, I am so excited to dive deep into this. I'm probably going to play a fairy with pink wings that hijacks a unicorn and flies it across the Feywild and probably pisses off some circus people <laughs> and gets like kidnapped and enslaved. It's going to be a whole time. I'm very excited. And I, I do hope one day we get to play in a game together or I get to play in a game that's going to, obviously nothing wrong is going to happen ever in your games, right, Perkins? No? Nothing ever does, as you well know. This, no, never. There's never double disadvantage. I, I, run, I, run the safest, I, I run the safest game in the multiverse. Safest games. I've never <laughs> cried at Chris Perkins' table. That's a lie chat. I have. He is evil, but we love him. Well, thank you so much for joining us. This has been the best glowing pixie dust covered 
sneak peek of the wild beyond the witch light and you guys can get lost in the adventure starting September 21st. So check out more information at dungeonsanddragons.com. But we're going to get to a quick break in just a few seconds. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you, Chris. Goodbye. I love you.